Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over conditional statements regarding string and bool. But before we do, I wanted to clean up a little bit from before. I wanted to go over logical operators. What if you had, so if um, integer um, number equals 33, okay? So what if I said if uh, number is less than 30. What if I wanted more than one condition? What if I wanted less than 30 or um, and, no, and, and greater than 20? So I wanted something in between. Print you are in your 20s. So what if I wanted to do both less than 30 and greater than 20. This is how you do it. You do it with the and and. But for every time you do that, you have to restate the variable itself. Okay, so the logical operators and and and, and is and. Two lines is or. Um, that structure is above the enter, so it's shift backspace. Shift backspace, shift backspace will give you that symbol. And that is or. So this and this have to be true, and it'll activate this. So this is false, and this is false. Um, or you could put or. Less than 30 or greater than 20, it'll activate it, yes. But when you think about this, if you put number is greater than 20, or less than 30, everything, any number you put inside of here will be true, right? Because it's either or. So you got to be careful about that. So you can put as many of these characters as you want. So this and um, number is uh, equal to 22. If you want to do put parentheses around them, so you know an equation where you go 1 plus 2, let's say for example, um, you go 1 plus 2 times 3, and you want to do this, right? So you want to add these before you do multiplication. You can do the same thing here. This has to be true. So this has to be true, or this has to be true. So both of those have to be true. And this has to be true as well. Um, is it? Uh, number is 22. No, it's not. This is true, but this is not. And you have to have both, so it won't actually activate anything. Let's get the syntax correct. And so nothing actually activates. Okay, so that's the way you write that. Again, back here, you can have as many ands ors as you possibly want to. That just makes the conditional statement a little more advanced. So let's go over strings. How do you do a string? Well, string name equals bill and string name two equals John. If na name, when you think about it, you can't really have greater than, less than, um, anything like that with strings, because that doesn't make any sense, right? What it does make sense is you can either have equal to John, let's do the or, or name two is equal to bill print high dollar sign name this is going to be incorrect of course so you can do name is equal to john nothing works because name is not equal to john and name two is not equal to bill it's just the opposite um, but if you put you can do either equal to or not equal to Name is not equal to John. Well, it's Bill, so it's that this is true. 
all you need this is or so all you need is one to be true this is true it'll activate high fill see so that's all you can do with strings it either matches or it doesn't remember capitals and lower cases make a big difference all right so that that's different a different character so that um capitaliz capitalization it is case sensitive so in other words capitalization does count what about bools okay so bool um uh case no um bool i'm just gonna say a equals true bool b equals false if remember inside of here i said this is a bool the condition it either is true or false right so you can actually just go ahead and put a character inside there oops caps lock is on it is true else if b else if uh else let's just put else it is false okay so what's going to happen here it is true all you have to do is put the value inside of there it is true and it'll activate it so you don't have to put a equals true you can it'll still work but you don't have to remember in dart maybe i didn't go over this before everything is going to be false by default unless it's true so uh, unless it's declared to be true the default is going to be false okay so if i put a just bool a and i don't actually initialize it this actually has a null value is that correct so so this is null so if null it'll automatically be false and it'll just skip through however look at this it breaks on an exception itself um this is you, so i'm gonna bring this up because you may see this in the future we are running in something called checked mode checked mode is basically what we call a developer mode it's basically a, a situation where you want to be as perfect in your code as possible and it won't let you go any further in production mode when you uncheck that box so if you go over here and you what did i just do um and i uncheck this basically so what is checked mode it, it'll go in what we call production mode so in production mode this will still run even though the value is null it will still run but acknowledge that it is not true therefore is by definition um, by default is going to be false and so therefore it's going to activate this one instead um it, it does that i think the reason it does that is basically um it will be a little more forgiving and let things run a little bit more um in certain circumstances in production mode than it will in checked mode there's a reason behind that i think the reason is beyond the scope of this video but just to let you know if some people may say hey it works for me and it doesn't actually work for me that's that may be one of the situations maybe you're in production mode and the other person's in checked mode or vice versa okay um let's let's keep going a little bit further i'm going to go back to the strings name equals bill now remember again this is a bool so what happens if i call a method dot right we can call a method some of these return a bool why can't i use that there's no reason i can't so name is empty is it that is false because this is not empty therefore it'll activate it is false so, so this is an example of how you can use methods and the objects because remember string is an object and this is a method on top of the object you can use those if they return if they give you a particular value of a bool now of course like length that's not a bool so it's going to give you an error again right because again we are in um uh, checked mode so that's not going to give you that but if you have some method that gives you is not empty a bool you can use that equally well all right so one final thing i wanted to go over um syntactic sugar okay you will hear a lot of times people will say something called syntactic sugar 
Um, the reason why you'll hear that a lot with Dart is because Dart is full of them. Um, it, it's full of areas where the, the authors of the language, they know that, hey, or the developers, I'm not sure what you call them, the developers of the language realize that, hey, you can write a bunch of code, but if you have lots and lots of lines of code that go here and there everywhere, you have to be able to read it easily. Okay, so it's kind of like somebody having super sloppy handwriting. Writing is fine, but now you have to actually read the thing, right? You may be able to read it because you wrote it, but you need everybody else to read it. So syntactic sugar is a way, is um, how Dart, um, you can write something that's easier to read. For conditional statements, basically the style is condition, question mark, result, colon, else. Okay. So this is how it goes. Um, integer age equals 12. I'm going to say age equals 12 question mark print yes else print no so that's how it goes condition question mark then instead of curly brackets it'll have have you'll just put this here this is the else statement and then print no. I, I honestly don't think that there's a way to do else if in this. I think that this is, this is all I've seen. You just do it like this, and that's all. So it's nice and simple. I personally don't think this is any easier to read, but I can imagine if you have tons of these statements elsewhere all over the place, I, I can imagine it might be easier to read. So that will still work that way. Okay, so that's one example of conditional statement using syntactic sugar. That's just a, a term that we, we use to describe easier to read and more concise code, more compact, more um, simplified code itself. Okay, so I hope that was uh, helpful for you. Thank you very much for listening.